Hey there guys, I'm Lee Williamson and today I'm going to show you how to use multiple constraint tags to constrain an object to more than one moving object. In this case, it'll be a character walking with a tray in his hand and both his right hand and left hand are moving. So without further ado, let's dig in. Right, so I wanted to show you guys how I did this workflow. Um, basically what I'm teaching today is I want to attach this tray to this man who's walking and um, that the train would move but be affected by both hands being holding the tray. Um, if you want to know how to animate this character, just go on to Miximo and that will give you a little bit more clarity on how to do that. Um, so let's go ahead and, and show you how it was done. I first of all would need a constraint tag. So if I go to my character tags and I choose constraint and I choose something called PSR. PSR stands for position scale rotation. So I'm going to click it and uh, under my priority expressions, I'm going to put 200. So uh, priority expression is kind of like a if you have a whole bunch of extra things inside your group, like subdivision surfaces, sometimes the object doesn't stick um, the way the constraint tag should work. So just whack that number up real high. That will resolve that issue. Now, the next thing is now that a PSR tag has been made, I'm going to press add here and I'm going to have two fields, one for each hand. So if I untwirl and I find my guy's hands, let's put, um, click on that again and I drag in his left hand on the one and I drag in his right hand on the other and now you'll notice when he's walking they are moving uh, together now the next thing is you've noticed the whole tray has gone uh, to its up so uh, let's just resolve that first of all uh, I could uh, group my tray and my mug inside another null and let's just call that tray again and then i'm going to rotate this one rather than that because that one rotate with the ps tear um, on it so let's just rotate that i'm just going to do it really fast and dirty just so you guys get the point there we go so now we've got a guy walking with a tray now my next issue was how to get the camera um, to look at the tray. And the problem is it seems to be the character is too close uh, to the tray. So when you do set up a camera, uh, turn that on, be sure to set it to super wide so that the camera angle allows for you, now once you zoom in through the character and get to the tray, you'll get to see the character and the tray at the same time. Let's just get over the top of him. There we go. And I'm basically rotating with my my three on the keyboard. And now you have the character walking. Let's rotate until we've got an angle that we're happy with. Right, so here is my character walking. Um, once I'm happy with that, I can go click on my camera, go to my tags and choose a protection tag. That way I don't mess it up. Um, by moving it. Now the next thing I want to show you is so let me turn the camera off. You notice I did a, a smoke uh, stream coming out of the cup. Uh, pretty darn easy to do. You can make a helix um, and let's just parent it to the mug's position. So I'm going to drop it underneath the mug, go to coordinates and zero out my coordinates. So my helix will appear exactly in the position where the mug is. Now if I zoom out, you can see the helix is there. All I need to do is rotate it 90 degrees. And I press T on my keyboard and scale the helix down till it fits the cup. Okay, let's just zoom in there. And then let's just give the helix some height. So, Let's make the height nice and high. And the next step with a helix is I'm going to create a circle spline. Let's just also zero that out just so you can see where it is. I'll zoom out again. 
press T on the keyboard and just scale that circle. Press R on the keyboard, rotate it 90 degrees and make it nice and small. Now that's basically for the thickness of the smoke. So you can hold down Alt when you've got your circle spine selected and you can choose something called a sweep. And we drag both the sweep and the circle in there. Let's drag the circle above the helix. Perfect. And now we have the smoke. And um, you can also go into the objects under your sweep. And you can scale the endpoint of your smoke so that it starts off thin. Now let's take that sweep and just position it somewhere in the middle of the smoke. Like that. Cool, now you can see the spline inside there. Now all I have to do is animate the helix's rotational position. So I go into my coordinates on the helix and I just animate that point. Uh, first things I've got to do is uh, change the axis of that spline. So click on the severe. This is your enable axis. I'm going to drag that. Um, I don't know what I'll do it. Why not rather actually rotate the sweep node? Uh, let's group it. And let's just call that smoke. See, you can't actually affect the uh, enable axis if the object hasn't been broken apart or grouped. So I'm going to group it and that will resolve it. Now I can move that down to the middle. And let's make sure it's also lined up over here. In the middle. Did I get that right? Okay, let's take that smoke and see if we can make it turn. Oh, yeah, not right. Uh, yeah, it's in the middle. And then all we have to do is animate this rotating. So I could uh, go at the beginning, uh, turn that on zero, drop down a keyframe, uh, go 10 frames forward and type in 360 and then drop another keyframe, right click, go animation, go to FK of manager and first of all, there's an easy use curve there. So we want to straighten that out to linear curve because we want it just to, to keep moving at one consistent speed. Um, you can click on the rotation and go to continue. And what you'll notice is now it just keep turning and turning. You can see the lines being drawn in there. And now, ooh extra fast. So all we have to do is just open up that keyframe more and slow it down. And there we go. Uh, another thing you could do is you could, um, you could drag a, a taper into your sweep objects. Let's just central our taper and scale it down. I'm just gonna taper the ends. So if you go to your object, we pull our strength in, um, and then just rotate that taper 180 degrees. And let's just pull that strength in. So it's bending the, um, the bottom bit in. We can make that taper a lot taller. Press uh, space on the keyboard and see. There we go. And then I'll just pull the strength up nice and high so it'll taper nice and thin at the bottom and nice and thick at the top. And then we could probably duplicate that taper. And 
rotate it around and basically do the opposite. So when I pull up the taper, it's going to get nice and thick at the top and thin at the bottom. And let's go back to our camera view. And there we go. That is how I parented a tray to a character's hands and make a made a smoke stream in Cinema 4D. I hope you guys enjoyed my tutorial. Thank you very much. Bye.